In 1970, the now deserted RAF base of Binbrook in Lincolnshire was active in the defence of the country. The base was home for English Electric Lightnings, fighter aircraft ready to be scrambled should any unknown objects enter our airspace. On Tuesday the 8th of September, the alarm came. An American pilot, Captain Schaffner, was first in the air to meet the UFO, but he never came back. From a military point of view, it's embarrassing to admit the existence of alien vehicles coming into our airspace against whom we have inadequate defence. There have been numerous instances involving aircraft UFO chases. In his book, Ghost Stations 5, Bruce Barrymore Halpenny, a military historian, tells of a mysterious UFO chase. A retired RAF crash investigator, Mr. Halpenny, says it wasn't easy checking the story because of secrecy surrounding the case. It was a normal routine UFO sighting when the alarm was given, Captain Schaffner scrambled his lightning. And he was certainly a very experienced lightning pilot, and he loved to fly the lightning. He's 6,000 hours on fast jets, a very, very experienced pilot. This is fire squadron crew room, and it was here that Captain Schaffner, from this particular section behind the curtains here, this was the actual crew section that issued the order. From the door at the side, Captain Schaffner took the initiative to be first, and upon hearing that there was a UFO, he immediately took the few paces along here to his lightning and was airborne within seconds. Two other pilots were scrambled at the same time and sent out over the North Sea. Their job was to intercept a radar blip which refused to answer repeated requests from the ground to identify itself. He reported that very bright lights. He was told then to proceed as close as possible, and which is what he was doing when he was enveloped with a very, very bright light. At that stage, he said that his aircraft was still flyable, but uncontrollable. The cl close proximity to UFOs has produced very serious uh, physical effects in the aircraft, and in some cases uh, with the pilots. Communications are interfered with, weapon systems are interfered with. Now at this stage, something, some malfunction with the lightning. So he's immediately withdrawn and instructed to ditch. The story then is that A, immediately he ditched and seemed to go down. The Ministry of Defence issued a statement that the aircraft had broken up. Then stories start to conflict left, right and centre. A security blackout is immediately put over. Because of the design of the Lightning, ditching has to take place at sea. A dinghy is provided. Mr Halpenny says that Captain Schaffner tried to eject, but the mechanism failed. On ditching, it's also possible to open the cockpit manually. A search and rescue team was sent. Captain Schaffner was never found. The blip had gone off on the radar, whatever it was had gone. The Lightning floated for a short while and gently went down. It was sitting on the seabed perfect. There was no mark other than on the nose and the aircraft was, was in perfect condition. So and the canopy was closed. That's the sinister piece. The canopy was closed. The Ministry of Defence say this was a routine low-level night flight and the aircraft came down due to pilot error. The pilot escaped on ditching but was washed away by the tide. The release is between there and within a split second he's gone. Should that not fire, there's also on the top manual, so that it is impossible not to have fired. So for him to be missing, the seat still intact and the canopy on and closed means the mystery was absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> September the 9th, 1970. It's the height of the Cold War at RAF Binbrook in Lincolnshire. Scramble. The Lightning fighter pilots of Number 5 Squadron are on alert for Russian intruders over the North Sea. 
Among the men scrambled that night is a 28-year-old American officer flying with the RAF. This was to be Captain William Schaffner's final flight. His ground crew were the last people to see him alive. Now, 32 years later, thousands are convinced his extraordinary disappearance was the result of an encounter with a UFO. Tower, Foxtrot 94 for priority taxi and takeoff. At exactly 8.25 p.m., Captain Schaffner took off on a flight to oblivion. Half an hour later, his lightning crashed into the sea. When it was recovered off Flamborough Head, the cockpit canopy was shut and the pilot had disappeared. Where the pilot went to is the $64,000 question. Nobody has ever answered that to this day, and they've always admitted this it was, a, it was quite bizarre. Retired North Yorkshire policeman Tony Dodd believes Captain Schaffner's target that night was an alien spacecraft. Whether we will ever find the truth, I doubt, because the Ministry will never re release details which would confirm that a UFO abducted anybody. They will never accept that. The Schaffner case has become one of the most talked about UFO stories on the internet. But how much of it is truth and how much fiction? According to many of the websites, Captain Lightning was scrambled to chase an unidentifying object moving so fast it had already outrun American fighters based in Iceland. A transcript of what's claimed to be the airman's last conversation with ground controllers has also appeared online. There is bluish light. God, that's bright, really bright. Wait. There's something else. It's like a large soccer ball. It's like it's made of glass. Foxtrot 94, is it part of the object or independent? Over. No, it's separate from the main body. The conical shape, it's at the back end, the sharp end of this shape. Contact in general descent. I'm going with it. 50. No, about 70 feet. It's, it's leveled out again. It's within heat haze. Wait a second. It's turning. Coming straight for me. I'm taking evasive action. Chicago, America's windy city. Captain Schaffner's young family settled here. They were promised the results of the inquiry into the crash. They never received them. In 1970, America had many missing pilots to worry about as the Vietnam War raged. Three decades on, that's changed. The mysterious disappearance of Captain Schaffner is something which has fascinated his fellow Americans. This is the nation that gave the world the X-Files on close encounters after all. Those close to him are desperate to find out the truth. And I'm going to hear their story. Hi. Hi. I'm Sophie. Glenn Schaffner and his brother Mike were children when their father left the family's married quarters at Binbrook the night of his fatal flight. Been here before? Th no. This is how I remember my father. I remember him being in a flight suit with uh, the helmet and the boots. The brothers still treasure mementos of their father's flying career, including his RAF logbook, which records his last flight. For the last two years, they've been trying to find the truth about his disappearance. We've promised to help them. You know, I tell people, you know, they ask what happened to my dad. I said, you know, he was a pilot and he went down. It's 30 years. The Cold War is over. Any secrets that they had about the job that my father was doing on the coast of England, um, standing alert for any kind of nuclear attack, is long gone. The world has changed, and we all know that. I think it's time that, that, that information like this was released. Uh, I love Star Wars. I love those movies. I'll sit and watch it over and over again, but when you try to tell me that it's real, uh, you better have a lot of hard facts. My dad was a pilot, you know. <laughs> he didn't chase UFOs. Back in Britain, the answer to what really happened lies here, in the Ministry of Defence. We're told the crash report has been shredded. But we discover that UFOs were taken seriously by the military. Nick Pope once ran Whitehall's UFO desk. I'm convinced that the hard core of these sightings uh, really might be something truly extraordinary. Military pilots do see UFOs. I think uh, some of them are a little bit reluctant in actually coming forward and making an official report because of the fear of ridicule. But uh, there have been a steady stream of reports over the years, yeah. Then a breakthrough. In the Morning Post, we receive a scribbled accident report from 1970. 
Schaffner, it says, had been on an exercise, intercepting a slow-moving Shackleton reconnaissance plane. Its crew had lost radio contact. Then, by the light of a flare, they'd seen the lightning in the water. Schaffner, who'd had limited training, had simply flown too low, trying to get beneath his target and hit the sea. Mike and Glenn Schaffner have flown in to find out more about their father's fate. The grass grows waist high at RAF Binbrook. Number 5 Squadron's crest is fading fast. Being back here and, and seeing all this, I mean, it's a real eerie place now. It's all desolate and, and it's just overgrown and stuff. It's kind of... It's weird. This is what I, uh, I remember dreaming about. Glenn, then aged five, clearly remembers the night two RAF officers knocked at the door of the family home and told his mother that her husband would not be coming home. I made my way down the stairs and I was peering through the stair rail. Uh, the weather was pretty bad that night, so um, I remember lightning and backlit door and two guys standing at the door. My mom opened the door and uh, they explained what they had to explain and she fell back. Glenn Schaffner have never seen a lightning before. Huge. These jets could reach twice the speed of sound. Mike Stretton used to fly them. He believes Captain Schaffner simply made a lethal mistake. If you get very, very slow and you got below the target, you're now in a very nasty situation. And accidents occur. And tragically, on that night, I mean, that's, that's what happened. And the stories that have come out of it are pure embroidery. To really help us bring closure, it would be nice to be able to read the facts. I mean, we've heard all the stories, and I just don't see what they're, uh, they're hiding, you know. So far, Hall has been remarkably unhelpful in answering the Schaffner's questions. But we've just heard that the RAF has finally found the report it's once told us had been shredded. I mean, from all the information we have from the, the Board of Inquiry and the Aircraft Accident Report, I mean, tragic though it is, it's an accident. Mm -hmm. um, and there is no other logical explanation. Photographs of the lightning show its ejection seat still in place. The report reveals why. Captain Schaffner had tried to eject, but his escape system had failed. I thought, you know, this would be the double emotional moment, but you know what? The only thing I can do is smile. It's just, it's so relieving to finally see this, because for me, not knowing anything and not even being cognizant of what was going on, and seeing these pictures now, it's just, it, it's a tremendous sense of relief. So this is the transcript. I mean, how, how much does it vary from the one that you saw on the internet? Quite a bit. <laughs> Quite a bit. There's no Martian talking in here. Yeah. <laughs> that like the RAI, the findings of the inquiry were ever hushed up, but some of the conclusions must have embarrassed senior officers. So, and Schaffner was in an impossible situation. He engaged full power, but by then seawater was probably flooding his engines. He reached for the handles on his ejector seat, but as the report says, it was negligently serviced and so it failed to go off. That left him with no option but to dive over the into a North Sea storm. For Mike and Glenn, the final mystery is why their father's body was never found. The Flambra lifeboat was launched at night. Its crew are used to fruitless searches for those missing off the headland. There's thousands of people missing in the North Sea that have never been seen again. Even if they tried swimming back to land, the tide takes all of them. If it's a setting off with the ebb, and then they, that's it, they're gone. In early September, how long do you think someone would have been able to survive out there? If he had a full survival suit on, which of course pilots wear that kind of gear, half an hour. I can imagine that would be all. I mean, I've waited my whole life for this. I mean, I measure my life by the fact that I am what I am because he wasn't. I don't have anything. I don't remember him. And I never will. And this is as close as I'm ever going to get. But at least I finally made it.